What do you think, Ananda? What good does a disciple see that he should seek the teacher's company even if he is told to go away? Remember, sir, our teachings are rooted in the Blessed One, guided by the Blessed One. Have the Blessed One as their resort. It would be good if the Blessed One would explain the meaning of these words. Having heard it from the Blessed One, the monks will remember it. Ananda, a disciple should not seek the teacher's company for the sake of discourses, stanzas and expositions. Why is that? For a long time, Ananda, you have learned the teachings, remembered them, recited them verbally, examined them with the mind and penetrated them well by view. But such talk as deals with effacement, as favours the mind's release and which leads to complete disenchantment, dispassion, cessation, peace, direct knowledge and enlightenment and nibbana, that is, talk on wanting little, on contentment, seclusion, aloofness from society, arousing energy, virtue, concentration, wisdom, liberation, knowledge and vision of liberation. For the sake of such talk, a disciple should seek the, com- the teacher's company even if he is told to go away. i stop here for a moment. So, at this point of time, I think the Buddha had already taught a lot of suttas uh, to the monks. Uh, and the Buddha says they are already very familiar with the, with, with the, with the teachings, uh, that is the suttas. Uh, they have recited them verbally, uh, examined them uh, and understood them. Uh, uh. But the Buddha says uh, that talk uh, which is uh, concerning few, having few ones, uh, on contentment, seclusion, aloofness from society, arousing, energetic effort, moral conduct, concentration, wisdom, liberation, knowledge and vision of liberation. For such talk, a disciple should, should seek advice from the teacher, even if he is told to go away. So these, these topics of talk are very important. Since this is so, Ananda, a teacher's undoing may come about, a pupil's undoing may come about, and the undoing of one who lives the holy life may come about. And how does a teacher's undoing come about? Here, some teacher resorts to a secluded resting place, the forest, the root of a tree, a mountain, a ravine, a hillside cave, a charnel ground, a jungle thicket, an open space, a heap of straw. While he lives thus withdrawn, Brahmins and householders from town and country visit him, and as a result he goes astray, becomes filled with desire, succumbs to craving, and reverts to luxury. This teacher is said to be undone by the teacher's undoing. He has been struck down by evil unwholesome states that defile, bring renewal of being, give trouble, ripen in suffering, and lead to future birth, aging, and death. That is how the teacher's undoing comes about. And how does a pupil's undoing come about? A pupil of that teacher, emulating the teacher's seclusion, resorts to a secluded resting place, the forest, the root of a tree, a mountain, ravine, hillside cave, etc. While he lives thus withdrawn, Brahmins and householders from town and country visit him. And as a result, he goes astray, becomes filled with desire, succumbs to craving, and reverts to luxury. This pupil is said to be undone by the pupil's undoing. He has been struck down by evil and wholesome states that defile, bring renewal of being, give trouble, ripen in suffering, and lead to future birth, aging, and death. This is how the pupil's undoing comes about. Stop here for a moment. Here the Buddha is talking about a teacher and the pupil who goes to a secluded place to practice. But maybe because they become famous and a lot of people come to visit them and bring offerings and all that. So they get a lot of offerings, they get uh, become famous. And then uh, they go astray. It's very easy to go astray, especially when a monk becomes famous. So this is said uh, to be the uh, teacher's undoing uh, and a pupil's undoing. Uh. This too uh, refers to external sect ascetics, uh, uh, not to the Buddha's uh, disciples. Uh. And uh, this, um, as a result of this, uh, they will uh, 
they will uh, continue on the round of samsara, the round of rebirths, uh, and also they will suffer uh, having been uh, overcome uh, by name and fame and uh, offerings and all that. Uh. And how does the undoing of one who lives the holy life come about? Here, Tathagata appears in the world. Arahan, Samasam Buddha, perfect in true knowledge and conduct, sublime, knower of worlds, incomparable leader of persons to be tamed, teacher of gods and humans, enlightened, blessed. He resorts to a secluded resting place, the forest, etc. While he lives thus withdrawn, Brahmins and householders from town and country visit him. Yet, he does not go astray or become filled with desire, succumb to craving and revert to luxury. But a disciple of this teacher, emulating his teacher's seclusion, resorts to a secluded resting place, the forest, the root of a tree, a mountain, etc. Et While he lives thus withdrawn, Brahmins and householders from town and country visit him, and as a result he goes astray, becomes filled with desire, succumbs to craving, and reverts to luxury. This one who lives the holy life is said to be undone by the undoing of one who lives the holy life. He has been struck down by evil and wholesome states that defile, bring renewal of being, give trouble, ripen in suffering, and lead to future birth, aging, and death. Thus there comes to be the undoing of one who leads the holy life. And here in Ananda, the undoing of one who leads the holy life has a more painful result, a more bitter result than the teacher's undoing, or the pupil's undoing, and even and it even leads to perdition. I'll stop here for a moment. So here, the Buddha is talking about a Buddhist monk, a disciple of the, the Buddha, the Tathagata. And here he is said to be the one who leads the holy life. Whereas the earlier, earlier when we, when the Buddha talked about the teacher and the pupil, he does not say that they lead the holy life because the real holy life is the path taught by the Buddha, the path that leads out of the round of rebirths. That's why the real holy life is to be found in the Noble Eightfold Path. And the Buddha says, uh, one who has already come to the Noble Eightfold Path, uh, if you go astray, uh, and then the result uh, is much more bitter than an external sect ascetic. Uh, it can even lead to hell, uh, because the, 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 the teaching is so good, our teacher is so good, uh, the Buddha. And uh, so when we inherit something that is so good, uh, and we go the wrong way, uh, then uh, we have to pay much more than uh, somebody who follows an external sect teacher. Therefore, Ananda, behave towards me with friendliness, not with hostility. That will lead... Sorry, uh, stop you for a moment. So this one uh, set me a thinking. Uh, it's not only for monks, you know, even for lay people. Lay people, you have come to the Buddha's teachings, uh, which is so perfect, uh, utterly pure. You don't make use of it. Uh, when you pass away, uh, you're going to regret uh, very much. Uh, you, you're going to realize uh, such a valuable thing has come into your hands uh, and you just threw it away. And you will have, you, you will have uh, much more remorse uh, than if you, you, for example, if you followed an external sect uh, teaching uh, and the, the, the teaching is not, not worth much. Uh, you, if you threw it away... Uh, you don't regret very much. But you have come into such a perfect teaching as the Buddha's Dhamma and you don't make use of it. That is amounts to throwing it away. So when you, at the end of your life, you will regret extreme, uh, terribly, not only for a monk, also for lay people. Therefore, Ananda, behave towards me with friendliness, not with hostility. That will lead to your welfare and happiness for a long time. And how do disciples behave towards the teacher with hostility, not with friendliness? Here, Ananda, compassionate and seeking their welfare, the teacher teaches the Dhamma to the disciples out of compassion. This is for your welfare. This is for your happiness. His disciples do not want to hear or give ear or exert their minds to understand. They err and turn aside from the teacher's dispensation or teaching. Thus, do disciples behave towards the teacher with hostility, not with friendliness? 
And how do disciples behave towards the teacher with friendliness, not with hostility? Here, Ananda, compassionate and seeking their welfare, the teacher, that means the Buddha, teaches the Dhamma to the disciples out of compassion. This is for your welfare, this is for your happiness. His disciples want to hear and give ear and exert their minds to understand. They do not err and turn aside from the teacher's dispensation. Thus do disciples behave towards the teacher with friendliness, not with hostility. Therefore, Ananda, behave towards me with friendliness, not with hostility. That will lead to your welfare and happiness for a long time. I shall not treat you as the potter treats the raw damp clay. Repeatedly restraining you, I shall speak to you, Ananda. Repeatedly admonishing you, I shall speak to you, Ananda. The sound call will stand the test. That is what the Blessed One said. Remember, Ananda was satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words. Now this part, last part, now I like to elaborate a bit. Now. Here the Buddha says uh, that we should behave uh, with friendliness uh, towards the Buddha. Uh, that is by uh, uh, hearing what the Buddha says uh, in his discourses. Uh, and and uh, give ear and exert the mind to understand what the Buddha is trying to teach us. Uh, uh, and if we don't pay attention to the Buddha's teachings uh, and try to understand, uh, then we are behaving with hostility towards the Buddha's, uh, towards the Buddha. Actually, uh, many people have come to the Dhamma and they don't study the Buddha's words uh, well enough. Uh, they don't know uh, that there are certain suttas, uh, like in the Nigga Nikaya, Sutta 29, uh, where the Buddha says uh, that his teachings, uh, his suttas, uh, are complete uh, and perfect uh, and utterly pure. Uh. There is no other teaching uh, so perfect, uh, so pure as the Buddha's teachings. Uh, uh. And the Buddha says, uh, if you want to add to his teachings, you don't understand his Dhamma. If you want to subtract from his teachings also, you don't understand his Dhamma. In other words, uh, we should stay only to the original discourses of the Buddha found in the four Nikayas uh, and six books of the Kudaka Nikaya, the fifth Nikaya, uh, the original teachings of the Buddha. Uh. Unfortunately, nowadays uh, there are additional teachings uh, to be found uh, which are not the Buddha's words. Uh. We know, uh, for example, the Abhidhamma, the commentaries, later books like the Visuddhi Maga, later uh, sutras like the Mahayana sutras and all this. Uh. And the Buddha has warned uh, in the Sangyutta Nikaya 20.7 that uh, uh, in time to come, uh, uh, the Disciples, that means the Buddhist monks, uh, will not want to listen to the Buddha's words. Instead, uh, they want to listen to the words of disciples. The word of the disciples uh, refers to uh, later monks, uh, later monks who wrote the Abhidhamma, later monks who wrote the commentaries, later monks who wrote the Visuddhi Maga, who wrote the Mahayana Sutras and all that. Uh, uh. So the Buddha has already warned us uh, not to listen to those teachings, uh, but to only keep to his original suttas. Uh. So if we don't want to investigate the Buddha's original suttas and understand them, uh, then we are behaving with hostility uh, towards the Buddha. Uh, so it's very important uh, to study suttas like this uh, and to uh, behave towards the Buddha with friendliness uh, by uh, investigating uh, his original suttas uh, and trying to understand his original suttas uh, and not later writings uh, of other monks. Uh. So this sutta is quite a very, this is a very important sutta, uh, Maha Sunyata Sutta, greater discourse on voidness. Uh, uh, to recap, uh, the first part, uh, the Buddha says, uh, a monk does not delight Sorry, a monk does not shine by delighting in company, uh, by delighting in society. Uh, so the Buddha uh, obviously uh, uh, encourages monks to live alone because the Buddha says only by living alone uh, a monk can attain the bliss of renunciation, the bliss of seclusion, the bliss of peace, the bliss of enlightenment, uh, namely the jhanas. And also... Uh, uh, 
one who takes delight in company and in society uh, will never be able to obtain uh, liberation of mind uh, that is temporary, uh, that is the jhanas. Or liberation of mind that is perpetual and unshakable, uh, the, the various Aryan stages, uh, the parts and the fruits. Uh, uh. So uh, it is obvious from here uh, that uh, solitary living uh, for a monk uh, is, 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 is very important uh, if he wants to get out of samsara. Uh, 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 then uh, the Buddha says uh, that uh, if he inclines his mind towards uh, this, uh, the signless concentration of mind, voidness, uh, then if people come to talk with him, uh, he invariably uh, uh, talks in such a way as to dismiss them. Uh, so uh, he doesn't encourage too much talking. Uh, and then the Buddha says uh, a monk uh, should engage in talk uh, that only deals with effacement, uh, talk on wanting little, on contentment, seclusion, aloofness from society, arousing energy, virtue, concentration, wisdom, liberation, knowledge and vision of liberation, uh, and not to en engage in worldly talk. Uh. And then the, the Buddha also said uh, to constantly review the mind, uh, whether the mind is excited uh, by, by the five chords of sensual pleasure. Uh, and if the mind is excited by five chords of sensual pleasure, then uh, to make more effort uh, to attain the bliss uh, of seclusion, the bliss of renunciation, uh, so that he goes into his mind rather than outwards into the worldly pleasures. Uh, uh. And also the Buddha says uh, to... Abandon the conceit, I am. Uh, it's very important uh, to see impermanence uh, in the five aggregates, uh, uh, which are also the body and the mind. Uh, constantly to see uh, impermanence uh, in the body and the mind. Uh, and slowly uh, we will cut the conceit, I am. Uh, and then the Buddha also warns uh, that once a monk has come into the Dhamma, uh, and if he goes astray, uh, it's very dangerous uh, for a monk who, who wears the robe uh, to go astray. Uh, and it can even lead him to hell. Uh, and then lastly, the Buddha says uh, that we should behave with friendliness to the Buddha by uh, trying to, uh, to to understand his words uh, in the original teachings. Uh, uh, and then the Buddha says uh, that, uh, Ananda, I shall not treat you as the potter treats the raw damp clay. Uh, in other words, uh, I, I, I won't treat you as something very delicate. Uh, and the Buddha says uh, he constantly admonishes his disciples. Uh, the sound core uh, will stand. Uh, so, actually a lot of people don't know the Dhamma. They think uh, uh, showing compassion means uh, to be... Uh, very to speak uh, kind words to the disciple all the time. You find this is not what happens with the Buddha. The Buddha sometimes, uh, when the disciples do something wrong, uh, he will scold them, uh, call them foolish men, uh, and uh, and so uh, that's the way that the Buddha says uh, that. Uh, uh, actually, that is uh, compassion. That's a real compassion. And a disciple needs to be to be scolded. Uh, the teacher should scold the disciple so that he'll wake up. Otherwise, he won't wake up. Mm. Okay, anything to discuss? No, 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 no. What, what he means is those um, uh, those um, those genuine disciples uh, will withstand all that scolding. Those genuine monks, uh, because sometimes the Buddha talks about genuine monks uh, uh, and fraud monks. Uh. Uh, 
Because uh, there are a lot of monks who like to be popular, so sometimes they know what is the real Dhamma, what is not the real Dhamma, but they dare not speak out because they want to have a lot of disciples, they want to have a lot of supporters, they want to be popular, they want to be famous, so they dare not speak out. Uh, so uh, they tend to speak words uh, which people like to listen. Uh. Sometimes they even say that their disciples have attained various stages uh, of attainment and all these things. Uh, but uh, that is not the Buddha's way. Uh. The Buddha, in the suttas you find the Buddha says, uh, uh, if it is white, we, we should say it is white. If it is black, we should say it is black. Uh, we should speak the truth. Uh. No fear or favor. How can he say that the uh, uh, liberation by wisdom is four jhanas? Eh? What is his basis for saying that? Because we find in the, for example, uh, Verbal Sariputta is uh, supposed to be liberated by wisdom. That is what the commentaries say. And in the Anupada Sutta, we found that Verbal Sariputta has attained all the four rupa jhanas, all the four arupas, and plus cessation of perception and feeling. So he's still uh, liberated by wisdom. So what he sees, there's no basis. In case any one of you is interested, uh, I've written about this liberation by mind and liberation by wisdom in uh, my book, Samatha and Vipassana. Yeah, but uh, that opinion, I think, uh, uh, even is uh, a lot of the Mayanis won't support that, isn't it? Okay, shall we end here? Yeah? Uh.